In this video, I'm going to show you some incredible tricks with hard ups and box cutter that I'm pretty sure you had no idea are even possible. Let's go. Now, before we begin, if you just started with Blender or even if you're an intermediate student, then check out our accelerator course. It's superb. We have thousands of students, hundreds upon hundreds of testimonials and people absolutely love it. It's gonna give you very solid foundations in hard surface modeling. It's gonna teach you exactly what you need and none of the fluff. You will learn hard surface modeling, blockouts, detailing. You're gonna learn principles of design, camera work, lighting, editing, rendering, all the jazz. In addition, we're gonna teach you how to create your portfolio, how to manage it. And this is gonna give you a business card that's gonna help you get the jobs, recognition and possibly get you hired in a studio if that's what you want. So check it out. The link is in the video description. You can also see it on the screen. And if you're going to click it now, you're going to get a nice discount. So check it out and enjoy. Great. So now let's talk about the crazy tips for hard ups that I have for you. And they're really useful and very powerful. And I guarantee you that 99% of people who use hard ups have no idea these tools exist. The first trick I'm going to show you is going to be very useful for anyone who wants to print out their models using a 3D printer or, for example, send a model to a client who requires specific dimensions. So let's add a cube here and I'm going to add some cavity because reasons and uh, let's just turn on the box cutter. Let's just create a simple cut here, maybe some kind of, uh, you know, I don't know, joint bullion here, whatever. And let's just apply them. OK, so now we got one shape, right? So let's go to dimensions here. You can see that this object is now 3.9, so almost 4 meters by 6.2 by 3.3. That's huge. You know, there's no way it's going to fit any printer unless you're printing on some gigantic industrial printer, right? So let's see how this would work in Blender. I could press S and scale it. You could hold shift to slow it down to kind of, you know, precisely determine the size. And it's fine, but it's not very accurate because I cannot choose a specific, uh, you know, specific number. Also, if I did want to do that, so let's say I wanted to resize X to one meter, right? That's what's going to happen. You know, other axes will not adjust proportionally. And if I'm going to click and drag across all of them and set it to one meter, well, they will change, but um, all of them going to be, you know, one meter. So it's going to change the the ratio of length versus width versus height. So what you want to do, right, collapse this rubbish, and we want to go to Q menu, operations, and AccuShape. Now, AccuShape is interesting. It has two menus. You can press H to uncover this menu, unroll this, but uh, I'm not really using that. Let's focus here. You can move this menu, by the way, holding this... Um, bracket and you can collapse it if you want to. Now, AccuShape is interesting. It's going to act like a bounding box around your model, encompassing all the extremities of the model, right? So it's going to encompass with the box the entire shape. And now since our E, which is stands for equalize, is, is selected, we can proportionally scale the model using just one of these sliders. So you can hover over, click and slide. Even you can hold shift to be more precise to slow it down and change the size of this, right? And when you press space, it's going to resize the model back to the bounding box, but proportionally, which is exactly what you want. So let's say that you had some specific, and let's go back here. Yeah. Let's, let's say you had some specific dimension. Let's say that the longest edge cannot be longer than one meter. So let's set it to one meter and everything is going to adjust accordingly. And now you're peachy, right? Another thing that happens here is that this is a modifier, which means it's not destructive, so you can turn it on and off, right? It's a basically an Arculatis custom modifier created by Hardops. So you can still adjust it, turn it off, turn it on, and do whatever the hell you want. In addition, you got this bounding box here, which you can move around, and it's going to, you know, revert back outside of this box to the original shape. So you can actually change the shape and dynamics of your model. This could be very interesting, for example, for creating blockouts. So let's say you create a blockout and you're not happy with the proportions. You use AccuShape and then you move AccuShape until you're kind of happy with how the proportions look. This is a very interesting tool and has many uses. Next tool is really cool. I call it Impossible Boolean, right? A Phantom Boolean, and I, I'll tell you why. So let's cut this cube with box cutter like that. Now, what we have here, if I go to ever scroll, we have this live cutter, okay? So if I, one more time, 
not this one. Um, let's go to FS scroll and move this color. It's a live color, right? It's uh, you know it's a modifier running boolean modifier running on this mesh. Now, what if I wanted to continue with cutting inside of this cut? Now, this cut doesn't exist. If I go to edit mode, right, it's still a cube. Okay, if I if I'm gonna turn it off, it's still a cube. If I go to edit mode, you can't see this geometry. It's it's, it's a phantom geometry. It's a ghost. It's a it's a life modifier. This geometry inside of this cut doesn't exist. These faces here inside, they don't exist yet. I would need to apply the modifier, right, to go here and um, apply the modifier for these faces to actually physically exist. So let's go back. Yeah. So what if I wanted to cut further? using this face into that shape. You can't do it because this face doesn't exist, but you can do it with box cutter. So box cutter can actually grab this face or multiple faces and create a Boolean out of them. So watch, I'm gonna select this shape, right? Go to, op, uh, go to mesh tools and I'm gonna go to face extract. Now press H to uncover this menu and you got multiple options here and I'm going to show you a few, few uh, cool tricks with it. So what you can do first is select faces you want to um, use as boolean. So let's say I want to grab this one, hold control and grab this one. So now I got two faces marked red. Now what I can do, right, is I can press space and I can adjust the size of a cutter, click and now I'm going to start cutting these faces in or out. If you want to go out, you can see here in the menu, you need to switch it to A for union. So you can do this. And this is really interesting because technically you're cutting with something that doesn't exist, right? So now you got two booleans, which is really interesting. So if I go to ever scroll, you got this boolean and this boolean. Now, in addition to this, you can still cut this boolean, right? So the, uh, the first one. So if I'm going to go back here, have a scroll, there you go. I could grab this boolean to local view, right? And I could, for example, cut it in here like this. So watch, I could just do something like that, right? Then go back and I got this shape. You know, you can do some really crazy stuff that is basically impossible with, uh, with vanilla blender. Okay, so that would be a phantom boolean. Now, next option is also interesting, and it's also coming from box cutter. It's called recut. So let's say you got this cube here, and let's grab a end gun cut and slice it here like this. So we got this cut, right? So now let's say I wanted to slash this mesh like this, right? And uh, with X, so I'm going to run this and press X. But I wanted to for this. Um, I wanted for this. Let me just recover this cutter. I wanted for this cutter to slash it inside of this mesh, but recover that part that was cut off with the previous boolean. So with this, um, you know, with this uh, end gun boolean. Now that's where recut comes in. So watch this. I'm going to remove this boolean here, this slash, right? And I'm going to nuke this one and hide this boolean. So watch, I'm going to slash it with a regular cut, so press X. And while this boolean is active, I'm going to press Alt X to do this, and that's a recut. So it cuts out the piece of the old boolean. And then you press space, and now you got this here, right? You know, this cut. So if I'm going to apply this, operations multiply, and I'm going to apply this one here, right? I got this cut in the middle here, which is pretty cool. Okay, so then you can, for example, I don't know, build something on top of it. And there you go. So if I'm going to bevel these, you know, they're going to actually, you, you will see that they kind of stand out here. There's a gap, which is really cool. So you can very precisely fit in pieces together like a puzzle. It's a really cool tool. The next tool I want to show you is an advanced feature of Hardop's mirror. So let's say you had this cube and I'm going to run uh, some mud on it. Do I even have my add-on here? Yes, we do material. By the way, material works our add-on works now with decals through decal machines so you can very quickly texture your stuff using our add-on and i will show you how it works right now so let me just turn the hdri on switch it to something different peachy so let's put some bevel on it right let me just drop some decal on here right you can see that this decal is going to inherit our mat here around which is really cool so you can very easily change mods to our mods using decal machine 
which is pretty cool. There you go. Boom, right? And that's awesome. But anyway, that's not what I want to show you. What I want to show you, and by the way, a link to our add-on and Deagle Parks is in the video description. I'm going to also show you uh, on the screen. Go and get it. Fantastic add-on and fantastic packs. It's going to save you a ton of time detailing your models. If you're going to add, for example, a decal text, so let's grab one of our info decals. Let's say one of these. Uh, well, let's say this one, okay? So we're going to project it somewhere here, right? and uh, project it. Now, if I wanted to mirror this to the other side, you'll see a problem. The decal is going to be inverted, so it's a mirror image, yeah? And in order to fix this, what you need to do is go here and go to mirror data and flip the UVs on the U coordinates. Now, this is very annoying because you're going to have to do it for every single mirror. So what you could do is turn it on permanently. So if you're going to add this decal again, right? Let's say a different decal. And I'm going to shift click here, Alt X to start the mirror. And you see here are more options. And what you can do is turn on this texture flip U, which will permanently set mirror modifier to use that feature. So if I'm going to now flip that across, it's gonna come properly oriented. So now if, even if I'm gonna use a different cube, and a different decal, right? Well, let's say we're gonna use this one, one of these, right? And I'm going to mirror this, boom, it comes in correctly because this feature in the mirror is gonna be turned on permanently. And there you go. Next tool I wanna show you is gonna be Set Origin. This is a tool that not many people know about. There's few uses, I'm gonna show you one of them. So let's say we have this cube here and uh, and the cube is rotated in space. And in addition to this, we have this kind of a weird kind of a triangle. Let me just, you know, kind of really mess it up properly like this. Okay, it's just really, you know, the rotation is completely bonkers, right? Now let's just run a cut here in the middle. Okay, and you see that will not work very well because now we aligned to this kind of a crazy local orientation or rotation rather. So we need to go to Shift V and change it to the nearest edge, and this should work. There we go. And we're gonna cut it in here like this, press X, and uh, we got this cut in the middle. And I want it on, you know, in addition, cut this one, and I want it to, I just select this one, and I want it to mirror this cut across this shape to the other side. I can't do it because, you know, my pivot point is somewhere there. So even if I recover the cutter and try to mirror this, right, it will not work. So what I first need to do, I need to move my origin point to this um, to this object first. Now I can't really press Shift S and to geometry because it will not work. Reason being, if I go to local view and remove boolean, this is still a massive cube. It's you know the cut is an illusion, like I told you before. It's a modifier. So Blender thinks still that this is a whole cube. So the only way to do that will be to set the region using hard ups. So here's what you want to do. You can do this in one go, but it's a bit complicated. So I'm going to show you in two steps. Okay. First of all, you go to Q, Mesh Tools and Set Origin. And you see that our origin point, this dot here, denotes where the current origin point is located. We want to move it to this piece. So click here and drag all the way down here. And then press F to move the origin point here to the middle. Now release that. But you see that before I release that, you see that our orientation of the origin point is still crooked. It's following the old axis, whereas it needs to be parallel to these edges. So we're gonna fix it in step two. So hold here and release. And our origin point moved, right? Now what we wanna do, we wanna, we wanna rotate it. So again, go to Mesh to Set Origin and simply click here and drag all the way here and press R to fix rotation and you're peachy. So now, if I'm going to click on this, shift click on this and Alt X, I got a gizmo perfectly in the middle of the shape and I can mirror my cutter to the other side of this slash cut. And that's how you do it. Next trick I wanna show you is gonna be with curving bullions along a curve. So let's grab a mesh here, which is gonna be a cube and I'm going to bevel this. And let's just add some bevel and weight in normals. Cool. So now we're going to cut this here with a small cut like that. And I'm going to press uh, V to array it. And if the axis doesn't align, so just press X to align it. And I'm going to, I don't know, select maybe, you know, I don't know, that man, okay. And shift click to live. 
Now what I want is for this array to follow this edge down. Okay, that's what I want. So what I want to do is I want to grab this edge here. Okay, uh, let me just turn off dots. There you go. Uh, let's grab this edge here and I'm going to extract it into a curve and you can do this with one click in hard up. So go to Q, click on the curve extract and press X to nuke this pipe because otherwise a hard up is going to create this pipe. So press X to nuke it and now you're left with just a curve. This is not geometry, it's a curve. So now what I want to do is I want to have this array follow this edge here all the way down, just curve, right? And we can use the curve as a guide. And in Vanilla Blender, this is annoying to set up, but this hard up is really easy. So select this um, cutter, shift select the curve, and I can go to hard ups menu and either click on this curve modifier or go to Q menu and simply click here. Now you can see the default one is minus X axis, which is not correct because the shape got flipped by 90 degrees. So let's switch it to X and that's correct. So now select just this cutter, right? and GX and move it along this curve all the way here. And you can now increase the number of these cuts and Bob Jungle. So there you go, that's how you curve an array of booleans, live booleans on a mesh using uh, this curve modifier. Obviously we're gonna need to secure this cut here so it doesn't deform the mesh so badly. You always wanna add some securing loops to isolate this shading a little bit better. And being hard ups, obviously you can mirror this because it's a modifier. So you can now, you know, select the shape and go, let's say um, you can mirror this to all sides and do something like this. Holding shift, you have to hold shift to enable multi-axis mirror with hard ups. The last tool I'm gonna show you is gonna be really cool, really simple, but very powerful. And we're gonna be using our add-on material works for it again. So, I mean, you can use add mat you want, but I just wanna show you how cool is uh, how cool it is with our add-on so let me just drop this down here and go to render view we're gonna go to our material add-on again and let's just enable hgri this should do let's add some plastic mud to the floor so plastic shiny maybe and this cube could be whatever like this one right if i wanted to cut this cube with a boolean and i wanted to have a different mat on a cut you can do this very easily with box cutter even though you know this is not really a, a mesh yet so the way to do that is to go to the menu with box cutter and go to material here and you can select here the correct mat you want to use so let's say shiny plastic which in our case is going to be the white mat so if i'm going to cut now this with uh select this cube cut with a box cutter you can see that now i'm going to have the white mat popping here in inside of the of the cube which is really cool and obviously you can change it anytime you want to whatever you want you can revert it back to um, other mod or you can just simply use the default one which is going to be the dark mod so there you go that's how you can quickly texture cuts using box cutter so that's it for the video guys thanks so much for watching and like i said in the beginning if you're starting with blender check our accelerator course it's fantastic we have thousands of students hundreds upon hundreds of testimonials this course will teach you everything you need to know and nothing else all the basics foundations of blender modeling hard surface principles of design then obviously lighting camera work rendering and even editing of your render so the whole workflow is explained and you can learn blender in less than two weeks if you sit on it probably less than a week and it's going to give you a fantastic start for your new adventure with 3d so check it out link in the video description and if you go now to our website you're gonna get some nice discount so definitely check it out and enjoy